Chapter 13, Continuity with Compactness and Connectedness. It's important. So we're going to first introduce the definition of being bounded. Well, if it's bounded, then there exists a mem such that this is true. Okay. I'm going to use this lemma, these two lemmas, before we prove our other theorems. Well, to prove them is quite easy. So, so this is A, right? If Y isn't this, then it means that there's this X in this set, such that FX is equal to Y, right? Well fx equals to y and fx is from the pre-image of e under f which means that y is in e so and again for this one e is subset of this well if x is an e right then there exists y and f of e such that f is equal to y because fx is in f e right this is an element such that is equal to y while y is in f e right then x X is the pre-image of F E. Because Y is in F E. F X is equal to Y, right? So if you take a pre-image, F is in the pre-image of so this is true. So this is true. Alright. So compact image is compact. The image of a compact set under continuous function is compact. Well, so let's prove it. <clears throat> so first we let first we let V alpha of the open cover cover of X. Nope. It's the open cover of f of x and f is continuous right so we know that so we know that f the pre-image of v alpha open right and we know that f this, all of them, is open cover of x, right? Because v alpha covers fx, so all their pre-image covers x. Well, if we want to prove it, so if it's not open cover, else if it's not open cover, then we have x is not in the union of this, right? But x is in f of x. So which means that if if this this doesn't cover this, right? Then we know that okay, x f of x is not in uh, it's not in if it's not in set of any pre-image then this cannot be any of the images right this cannot be in any images right so you have f of x it's not in f of this well this is a contradiction 
This is a contradiction, right? Because this covers this. And we show that the f of x is not in the image, but we define this function on the big X, right? So this is the open cover of x. All right, since f is compact, so we have finite subcovers. f of this big set is a subset of f of right? well this is equal to the union of this and this we use the lemma. We use the lemma. Each of them, right, is a subset of V of I by the lemma. So, open cover fx, we have a sub cover, find a sub cover, we're done. Next. So, <coughs> the theorem is that, okay, if it from x to rk is compact, f is continuous, then the image is closed and bounded. Well, this is true by the Henry Borough theorem. Automatically true. And if it's into R, well, then the supremum and infimum exist because they're bounded. They're bounded by above and below. Right? Above, you have supremum. Below, you have infimum. So, also it is closed. If it's closed, it means that if it's closed, that means that the supremum, this supremum is in f of x, right? Which implies this whole thing is true, right? And also this is in, because it's closed, right? So we have this is true, so for q and x. Okay, well, if it's bijection, continuous, then compact, then the inverse function is also continuous. Okay, so, so we want to show that, okay, we want to show that this is continuous, which means that V open in x, then we want the pre-image, the pre-image of v open in y, but this is equal to f of v, right? So, so we fix and we fix v open, open, then v complement is closed. Right, and closed subset of a compact set is compact. So we have VC is compact. Right, and again, F of VC is compact. The image is compact because F is continuous. Right, F is continuous. And compact subsets are closed so f of vc closed compact subsets are closed right this is like in chapter two 
while f is bijection, that means that f of vc, the complement of close up is open. Open, right? Well, this thing, this is equal to f of v. Why? Because say this is v and all of them v complement and again you have um this is f of v right then this whole thing must be f of v complement these must maps to this right they must map to here because it's bijective right this is trivial while this thing if you take a complement is equal to f of v Right? So f of v is open. <coughs> and we're done. We want to show f of v is open. Right? We want to show this is open. So here's a, like a simple diagram we can show. Hmm. V, V, F, V, V complement, maps all those. F, V is closed and its complement must be open. Yeah, this is like, this is like a good property of uh, bijective functions. All the VCs maps to. Well, F of V, the complement of F of V is equal to F of VC, right? This is like a bijective function. Like, Because all of these, so let me just redraw it. Let me just redraw everything. Redraw everything. So say you have this, this, FV here, and then FV here, right? And here's V complement. Well, all of V complements, they cannot. They cannot map to f of v because it's bijective. If you're in v complement, you must map to f of v complement. Right? So all the vcs map to here. Maps to here. Like on these part. So, so which means that, which means that f of vc which is this, these parts are the, are the complement, complement of f of v. So it's this, right? A vc, and you take a complement again, right? Of a vc, the complement, and this you can take a complement. This disappeared. Right, now we're good. Now I'm gonna introduce the uniform continuous. Well the uniform continuous is okay and continuous for any epsilon and p there exists a delta. So the delta depends on epsilon and the point p. 
but uniformly continuous is like the delta only depends. The delta only depends on epsilon works for all p. All right. So this is okay. If it's uniform continuous, is this epsilon greater than zero? If it, for any epsilon x is delta such that for any point, if their distance is less than delta, then we have this is true. The distance between f x and f y under metric y is less than epsilon. Okay, so note, it is a stronger property than continuous. But in the world of compact metric space, these two are equivalent. Again, compact is so useful, right? And this is a big theorem. It's pretty long. It's challenging, but let's prove it. So basically, we for, for epsilon greater than zero, for each p and x, it gives a positive phi p such that using f is continuous, we have q and x if the distance between p and q is less than phi p then we know that fp fq less than epsilon right <coughs> over two or better right okay now because f is continuous on every point right so for any p, we have, like, this is basically delta p or whatever, phi p. Feels like, it feels like more like a mathematician. And we construct this set, jp, it's a neighborhood. It's all the point in x such that it's less than 1 over 2 phi p. So again... This is phi p and one through phi p. So basically you might think, okay, so like you have a neighborhood, right? Here's your p, here's your radius, it cut it in half, and it cut it in half. This is jp. You could just cut it in half. Okay. So now, we know that P is in JP, because distance between P and P is zero, right? P is in JP. So we have the unit all P and X open cover of X. Well, X is compact. That means that it's covered by finitely many points. Right? Okay. Now we'll pick delta is one or two of the minimum minimum of minimum of all the <coughs> the radius of these neighborhoods. Okay? So we know that delta is greater than zero of course. So here is like very important. It's essential we use like we using the the compact. The compact gives the finiteness. Or if we're not using compact, then the infimum of infinite sets of in, infimum of positive sets might be zero, right? Might be zero. But this delta gives a positive number, which is fantastic. No. We let P and Q and X such that D of X, P, Q <coughs> less than 
this, right? And we know that P is in some PMs or right because open cover because open cover because open cover p is an x right so we know that the distance between p and pm is less than 1 over 2 phi pm followed by the definition and we know that the distance between Q and PM we use a triangle inequality delta plus <coughs> right because Delta is less than equal to, yeah, because this is true. We're using this fact. Okay, so now we have this is less than this, this is less than equal to this. So again, D of So we have PQ is less than this, Q and PM. And now we use, ultimately we go back to, we go back to our functions, F of P, F of Q. Right, this is less than equal to And PM. P and PM are, are this at less than 5 PM, right? So when we go back up here, go back here, right? We know that, okay, by the, like the continuity, right? This, go back here, it gives epsilon over 2 also this one these two add together gives this again we're done why we're done <coughs> why we're done <coughs> because Okay, for epsilon greater than zero. Pick a delta such that this gives this less than this. So the picture is that, okay, if you have P and you have Q, Right. So if I P in fact Q and then here's your here's your PM right and P um so this is this is delta. Right there, delta. Or I should move this a bit closer. A bit closer. And it's a bit further. So we have this is delta. This is delta. 
right? And P is in PPM is less than 1 over 2 PM, right? So this is the, here's like one, here's like less than 1 over 2 phi PM, right? So here, suppose like here's the half, right? So the whole thing is phi PM, right? So the whole thing is phi PM. Well, which is, which makes your Q, which means your Q is in the neighborhood of Right? It's a bit weird, but you get what I'm saying. Right? Q is in half of this, is in this neighborhood. Right? Because it's this thing, this thing, less than or equal to less than equal to delta plus 1 over 2 phi pm. <laughs> so you get what I'm saying, right? This is a triangle inequality. Well, this is, of course, less than equal to phi pm. Right, so it's in the neighborhood. Well, th this is a neighborhood. Right, PQ, distance, right? And they maps to their functions, map to their function. Well, this PM, F of PM, F of QM, is less than epsilon over 2. And, F, right? f of q and f of pm is of course less than epsilon over 2 right so of course we're done and okay connectedness who we this, is, this one's long okay we should grind proof Connected spaces under continuous function is image is still connected. So continuous function is like a very good property, right? So if we want to show that fx connected, we suppose for a contribution that fx is not connected, or like we prefer to use e. Suppose for a contradiction that f of e is a union b separated okay now we put g is equal to intersection of this h is the intersection of b right and now we have we have so E is in F of F negative one E by the lemma. No, no, no. It's in F negative one negative one of F E. Well, this is equal to union with F. Right. Okay. So this means that E is subset of G union H. And also we know that G union H is a subset of E. Right? Because if you're in G, then you're E. If you're in H, you're in E. So no matter if you're in G or H, you are in E, of course. 
So we have E equals to G union H. So, so for contradiction, we might guess G H separated. Right, G H is separated. Okay, so first, first, we know that A is a subset of A closure, so we have G is a subset of this because G is defined. G is defined like this, right? This and right. And since this is closed, provided that F is continuous. So I forgot to tell you that, okay, like for for this open this open but similarly you can prove that if this is closed then this is closed like if f is continuous right you basically use like f of Oh, I forgot. No, something about compact, like some complement and pre-image. Wait, let me search it up. Wait, wait, wait. All right, here I'm back. Because use the fact that the pre-image of this is the complement of this pre-image. And you use this to prove the, the lemma. So close, closed, or something like that. Okay, so continue. Closed. So this is closed. G is a subset of this. So we know that the closure is in this set. This is a theorem from uh, chapter two, earlier theorem. DM me if you don't know. And um, so we have, well, right? You apply F of both sides. Still holds, and again by the lemma, right? So we have f of g. This is an a. Okay, we mark this. We mark it right now, and we want to show that f h is equal to b. Why? So let me show you. So if h is an h, then h is in by definition. Right? So we have f of h is in b. Right? So we have f of h subset of b. Now, for b and b, B for B and B you must be an F E, right? B and B, so B and F E. So there's this E such that F E is equal to B. Right. Now E is an E. F of E is an B. So we have E is in this. So we combine this two and this two. E is in H. So we have B is in the image of F of H, right? Because F E is equal to B. Well, this implies that F of this no, this applies all the elements in B, right? Okay. So you prove you prove this and this. So we're good. Right? F H is equal to B. 
and also A, they're separated, right? So we know that F of G closure is in A closure, right, by this. So we know that F of G closure intersects with B is empty, right? Because, because by this, right? And also this. Okay, so this gives F of G closure intersects with F of H as empty. Which means that the union of these things, right, is an empty, which gives it's empty. Why well, use the lemma again? G prime is a subset of this. H is a subset of this. So you have G closure, H as a subset of empty set. Wow. Of course. Right. And similarly, we have this is also true. So a contradiction since E is connected. Okay. Now it's an uh, intermediate value theorem. <coughs> we all know that, so let me just... Okay, so the proof is really easy. This is connected. Right? This is connected. The interval is connected. All the closed intervals are connected. So F is continuous, which means that this is connected. Right? And then we use this direction. Right? Which means that for any for any C and F of well, this connected means that, okay, well, for any C in this image, well, of course, FA, FB are in this, right? And for C is in FA, FB. For C is an FAFB. Then we know that C is in F of AB, which precisely means that there exists whatever X such that FX to the C. Done.